now a tale of two executives. One stock continues to climb as he settles into the spotlight and takes swipes at both parties, while the other continues to suffer from a case of the health reform flu. And then big mouths. Mary Cheney taking a shot at her sister and her sister-in-law on national TV. Rob Ford taking shot after shot, plus, well, some crack. And anything else he can get his hands on. Did she plot this all out? And why can't he see his plot has reached a finale? And later, they're legally adult in the eyes of the cops and the courts. But can they be forced to sit on a jury? The answer is yes. Can they... Register for potential drafts, yes again, but why can't they buy a pack of cigarettes in New York City anymore? Is the city's new cigarette law a double standard? A lot going on this hour. We thank you for joining us. Good evening. Welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Tuesday night, November 19th. We're going to have all that plus the anniversary of Gettysburg and the Gettysburg Address, remembering JFK, both as we approach that 50th anniversary of his passing this coming Friday. But we begin with a political ailment continuing to plague President Obama. Now, he's apologized, he's promised fixes, and he has seen his poll numbers plummet. The only thing that the president hasn't done yet is frankly fire somebody. But his numbers, well, following their current pattern, it's only a matter of time before that happens as well. Now, more on the Obama freefall. When you see the numbers, that's the only way to call this thing here. And we're joined by our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, with that. And, Rich, we'll get to the numbers in just a moment. But first, reports that the Obama administration may have known about problems with healthcare.org months before the website's flawed launch in October. The Times reporting officials at HHS and the White House got a report back in late March more than six months before launch date that, quote, the effort to build the healthcare.gov site was falling behind and at risk of failure unless immediate steps were taken to correct the problems. The White House saying it knew of the report, but that no one knew of the size and scope of the problems. But fewer Americans may be prepared to believe the White House right now. That is one of the hits President Obama taking in the latest ABC News Washington Post poll. His job approval, 42 percent, lowest of his presidency. His job disapproval, 55 percent, highest of his term. The poll giving President Obama career lows for a strong leader, understands the problems of average Americans, and perhaps most damaging, being honest and trustworthy. Health reform itself also taking a pounding in its rollout and the overall view of the new law. The rollout, 63 percent disapprove of the way that's been handled, and 57 percent now say they oppose the law. That is up eight points in just a month. And if you need some perspective on the political damage being done to the president, consider this. Last November, President Obama beat Mitt Romney by four points, 51 to 47. Today's poll would reverse the election. If the election were held today, the poll says Romney would beat Obama by four. Rich? The height of hypotheticals here, but it puts in context just how much uh, this has hurt him. All right, Andrew, thank you very much. Let's see what our panel has to say about this health care uh, reform mess here. Joining us, political journalist and author Dominic Carter. Chris Shays, former Republican congressman from Connecticut and a distinguished, I like to say that, fellow in public <laughs> service at the University of New Haven. And we've met that. Andrew as well. All right. Um, I, can the argument be made, Andrew, that the president's hit rock bottom on this, that he can't really go lower than this? They can only pick up. The argument is by the end of this month or soon thereafter, the website's going to be functional. Um, they're going to have tangible shows, stories to show people have signed up. It can't get worse, can it? Well, I mean, you know, it can always get worse. His numbers aren't as bad as George Bush's were in the second half of his administration. I, he, I'm certainly, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure they hope that things are going to turn around from here. We even had a, a, an op-ed today from Paul Begala, and we've seen it from other uh, Democrats as well, that basically it's all uphill from here. It really can't get any worse. But, of course, it can if the numbers don't deliver, if, they're, if the government has to borrow money to keep the reform plan going. So, you know, don't don't ask if it can get worse if you're not sure if it can. Well, Congressman, when you have uh, an unpopular president or an unpopular presidential initiative, um, the troops get nervous. And when I say the troops, I mean members of Congress. You've been there firsthand where people say, wait a second, next November, I'm up. <laughs> I'm in the chamber here. Um, how does that manifest itself when you got less than a year before the midterms in terms of policy, um, uh, uh, you know, who stands with the president, how long they'll stand with him on this? Where to begin? <laughs> he has a Katrina problem. I mean, I felt that President Bush, the rug was pulled out from under him. 
he was in a big trap after Katrina. And I think this presence is in the same place. Because it's a competency issue? It becomes a competency issue. And, uh, you know, when, when it's a matter of trust and honesty, you can gain back a lot of other things. But if people don't trust you and they don't perceive you as being honest, whatever you say just doesn't help lift you up. Now, obviously, if they can get this to work better. But the, the, the health care bill itself has problems because in order to pass it, he had to make too many deals with the just one side of the aisle, the Democrats. And so the bill is flawed. It needs to be fixed. I'm not saying it needs to disappear. But is there a willingness from Republicans to fix it instead of viewing it possibly as, hey, if we fix it, we're only helping the president out Well, here. right now, I mean, for one thing, remember employers were supposed to provide health care and the president decided he would wait a year. When employers have to do that, some are going to have to will go out of business. Uh, there are going to be some big problems. And so that's not going to be seen right away. Um, so my answer to you is the bill itself has problems. And to answer your question, I don't think there's a real incentive on the part of Republicans to want to disguise those problems, postpone them, so that people won't see them until after the next election. You know, Dominic, you can certainly make the argument here that it's not just November that's important on the calendar. Things that we said, well, finally, I mean, just think 60 days ago, right? Democrats are sitting high on the hog here. They looked at Republicans with shutting the government down, flirting with the debt limit. Um, they're talking about taking back the House here, not only holding the Senate, but picking up margin. The president might even have a mandate and like this because they couldn't get a website to work, right? So anyway, all of a sudden these dates kick in again. You got December and January with debt limit and everything else in a perversity. The president might be hoping the Democrats that that same fringe wing won't feel so chagrined anymore. They'll feel validated because they, they wanted to fund the whole program. They're going to do this all over again. It's, it's perverse, but in a funny way, the president might be hoping for the same craziness that happened a couple months ago. Well, I don't know what he's exactly hoping for, but I do know it can get a lot worse. So I agree but with how? the congressman. Well, his numbers could continue to go down. That's number one. Number two, what's hurting him, as you have uh, talked about on this show, is he was almost his team at an expert nature when it comes to technology. Sure didn't have a problem when it came to getting reelected. Yeah. Sure didn't have a problem when it came to breaking down to the little minutiae of detail of voters. But then when it comes to health care, let me backtrack. Keep in mind that we had a dysfunctional system before Obama took this on. We can't, we got to keep that in perspective. That, you know, with, with, uh, with, with uh, health conditions, people were, were eliminated from the system. So he's trying to do the right thing, but his legacy is very much on the line. Right now, he is looking like an incompetent president. There's no other way to put it. And you know, Andrew, um, he can talk about procurement issues where it's hard to be able to just hire the service he wants. Nobody wants to hear that right now. The site don't work. And he's, he's already said, it's on me, um, I'm mad. But I, I still don't understand why somebody hasn't walked the plank yet. Somebody's got to go. When you have a mistake of this order, um, I'm sorry. Somebody should be fired. And uh, if he doesn't want to point fingers, that's you know, almost an indictment about it, because where's the accountability? The, the congressman drew the comparison to Katrina uh, earlier in the segment. I disagree with that comparison, with the exception of the political damage being done to the to president. Do uh, twice but, tonight, yeah. But you remember a uh, <laughs> heck of a job, Brownie. Brownie got the boot, but he got the boot like six months later, nine months later. It took a while for Brownie to get the boot. Sooner than you, that, right? No, it wasn't. You do, And you don't generally ask somebody that close to the beginning, to, to the spot where something went wrong for you. Uh, I disagree. Otherwise, it's an unbelievable admission that we really bumped. He's already say. done it, though. I think, Andrew, I think he's Kathleen, already done it. I think it. Sebelius will probably be fired or rather be asked to resign, but he can't do it today. And, you know, you could do it maybe early next year, but you... You Why? can't, because you look too weak, especially on an issue where you've had all of these knives out against you. If you admit to that by firing somebody, then, then they're coming after your But head Andrew, next. to use the Katrina analogy, the president stood somebody. in the lower, he stood in the French court, he addressed the nation, okay? There wasn't a capitulation at that point from President Bush here that they made terrible errors. I mean, that was part of my fault here, was there wasn't an acknowledgement, my God, uh, you know, we, the president's already done that. The president talked about how this was a, he, how he's an imperfect man, an imperfect president, and he will make more mistakes. He's frustrated. He never would have said what he would have said if he only knew how bad it was, all those things. He's already acknowledged that this thing's a fiasco. 
somebody's got to be canned, and they can't wait till January to do it. So I think I, you just I, made my I, point I, for I, me. No, but I'd like to know why not firing someone makes them stronger when they need yeah. to be fired. I think because firing I, somebody makes them weak uh, or I don't look think weak so. immediately. And and I think Can you're we making vote on this in and the I think you're making my point for me. I mean, Bush didn't even admit that there was a problem with Katrina when he's making that press conference. Obama at least so, has so gone we that want far. To replicate that? Uh, no, at least Obama has gone as far as to say there have been mistakes and we're working to correct well, them. Well, first off, I want to separate something. You had a 500-year storm. With all due respect, this is something they could have planned for. Uh, they had years to plan for this. This is total incompetence. And you also had hundreds dead, if not yeah. more, and hundreds uh, well, of thousands displaced if, versus trying to get if people To healthcare. put a punctuation thing on this, let's at least take our own impartial vote of the four of us. If you were the president, would you fire somebody before Christmas? Yes. Yes. If I were the president, somebody would have already have been yeah. fired. Christmas is way too late. You can't fire somebody Christmas Eve. Come on. That's, well, that's true. Scrooge. Well, you can give the, him another the bottom job. line, the president's, <laughs> his legacy is on the line. Somebody has to walk the but plank. But he has to show you that, that he thinks, forget about the words. You know, show me something, yeah, right? Rather, really, rather than talking about replacing, firing, we need to talk about he needs to replace people. Yeah. You know, not, you know, not blame Which them. But if I, I get confirmed. Yeah. I know you have to go break. <laughs> but he is breaking the hearts of Americans. Remember how he was elected, this president. He was supposed to be a different type of politician. A change agent. Right. Change. Mm -hmm. And in and, and the light of JFK. And look at what we're getting. Look at what the American people are getting. And unfortunately, whether it's fair or not, and life isn't fair, this will be, um, right now, this is when you say Obama. You don't remember that he's the guy who got Osama bin Laden. You don't remember that he's the guy that got you out of Iraq and Afghanistan. I know we look through the most narrowest of prisons right now, but this is first and foremost. And for five years, he was the competent guy. Maybe people thought he was too cool. Maybe people thought whatever. But at the end of the day, there was competency with this administration, even if you didn't agree with it. This is just... My biggest fear is that Republicans will overplay it. <laughs> so far, history... No, no, history no, but well, my biggest fear is people won't get health care. Yeah. All right. We'll be, let that be the last word. Now, the it gets better question on Obamacare is also a question for you at home. Is the worst behind us when it comes to this? Tables divided on that one, even though some supporters say better times are ahead. Go to our Facebook page or find us on Twitter and join the conversation. All right, up next here, a couple political stories uh, that have very little to do with policy, but they raise legitimate questions about the way politics are practiced today. Rob Ford, everybody in North America seems to know this clown from Toronto. And basically, if you smoke crack, get drunk in public, plow old ladies over during city council meetings. Basically, if you act like Rob Ford, you are done. So why doesn't Rob Ford seem to get that? Oh my gosh, we're gonna have more on that in a lot right after this.